meet all your favorite characters. Here are the Teletubbies. They love to play. Now, uh, which way does it go? Postman Pat's trying to help, but he seems to have got carried away. Don't leave yet. Come back. I want to get off. Lower away, Fireman Sam. OK, James. If you're in trouble... Just relax now. I'll try. You need Fireman Sam. Pingu loves to play. <laughs> and he's sure to make you laugh. We need an extra porter tonight. Ooh, can I be a porter? Thank you. All aboard! All aboard! Watch out, Noddy. Mind that ant. Find all your friends on this fantastic range of videos. And you can hear them on these story tapes. Read about them in our wide range of books, from activity books and sticker books to bath time books. Don't forget the magazines. And these CD-ROMs will provide hours of fun with puzzles and games. BBC Worldwide, a chance to meet all your favourite characters. And his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be not. Bring letters to your door. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It is breakfast time in Greendale. If you knock on Pat's door and go in, you'll see Sarah bustling about. Julian, it's time you were off. Pat is finishing his breakfast. Time I was off too. Julian is getting ready for school. Right. Off you go. Bye, Mum. Bye. Jess, have you seen my hat? Where did I put it? Ah, there it is. Time we were off. It's not our usual day today, Jess. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Pat. Good luck. Hold on tight, Jess. Off we go. <whistles> Sam Waldron's out early too. Morning, Sam. Morning, Pat. Where's your van, Pat? Can't stop. Taking the bus. A bus? What's he on about? Major Forbes has spotted the new notice in the post office window. Dashed good idea, what? It'll be extra work for Pat, though. 
said Mrs. Pottage. Morning, everybody. Morning, Pat. Hello, Jess. Come on, Katie. Time for school. Bye, Pat. Bye, Katie. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. We're ready to go. Hope you've got the keys safely. Oh, yes, Pat. And a fine morning to you, too. Here they are. Oh, thanks very much. This is exciting. I'll pop back in for the letters when I've got her warmed up. I left it down the next street, out of the way. Somewhere round this corner. Ah, oh, there she is. I wonder why Pat has left his van round the corner. Here he comes. What's this? It's not his usual van. It's new. It's a Royal Mail post bus. You are going to be busy, Pat, now that you're to pick up passengers as well as deliver and collect the mail. I know. Granny Dryden wants a ride into Ingledale to do her shopping. Oh, that reminds me. You'd best see if the Reverend wants a lift. His old car broke down on Wednesday. I'll not forget. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. The post bus stops outside the church. The Reverend Timms didn't seem to be ready. Pat had some letters for him. Oh, Pat, I wanted to go into Ingledale on your lovely new post bus today, but oh dear, I found these knots in my handkerchief, and I know they are to remind me about something, but bless me, I cannot think what it is. Well, Reverend, I won't be able to keep my passengers waiting. I'll have to be on my way. Uh, don't wait for me, Pat. I'll get the old bicycle out, if I remember in time. Well, here's your mail anyway. Goodbye, Reverend. Bye, Pat. Off he went to the next stop. Granny Dryden was ready and waiting for Pat, with her stick and shopping bag. The door's on the other side, Granny Dryden. Well, Pat, this is summit new. What a lovely way to go shopping. Mind the step. Oh! Whoops-a-daisy! Pat was feeling quite excited, now that he had his first passenger. Off we go, Jess. Oh, Pat, stop, I've forgotten me act. Oh, dear. Back we go. I won't be long. I knew I'd forget some it. I wonder if we'll ever get to Ingledale, Jess. Ah, here she comes. It was a lovely hat. A pity to leave it behind. All aboard! I just hope she hasn't forgotten anything else. I think we have another passenger, Jess. Miss Hubbard must have a lot of shopping to do. Stop! Stop, stop! Thank you, Pat. If you could pass me a bag or two. Certainly, Miss Hubbard. Pat helps with the shopping baskets and carrier bags. It was a struggle to fit everything in. Thank you, Pat. 
Good morning, Granny Dragon. All safe and sound. At last, they were able to move off. There's Ted Glenn waiting by his workshop. What's he up to? He usually goes into town in his Land Rover. I'll ride into Ingledale with you, Pat. I need a new gearbox for the Land Rover. Oh, Ted, don't look where you're putting your big feet. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. I didn't see your old basket there. It isn't an old basket, Ted, though it looks it after being stuck on your foot. It used to be a lot quieter carrying letters and parcels, didn't it, Jess? They went on their way at last. Over the hills. Round to the right. And along bumpy country lanes. Round to the left. Was Pat trying to catch up on lost time? Pat, you're making me all wobbly. Now what? Pat had to slow down because of Sam Waldron's mobile shop. It was a tight squeeze. Come on, Pat. Left hand down a bit. Take it slowly, or you'll scratch your new post bus. Pat, how about a little light refreshment? I'm sure Sam has something we can buy. Yes, a biscuit would be nice. It seemed a good idea. Can I give you one, Miss Hubbard? Oh, thank you, Ted. Pat decided to check a nearby letterbox. He found two letters. You'll all be spent up before you get to Ingledale, said Pat. And we really should be on our way. I have the letters to deliver as well as you, you know. I haven't finished me biscuits. Take them with you. Mind the step, Granny Dryden. After you, Miss Hubbard. Bye, Pat. And thanks. Have we left any behind, Jess? That's one thing about letters. They never get out for a biscuit. He passes by Garner Hall. Hello, Pat. Good luck, old fellow. Oh dear, what now? What's B.C. Selby doing? Stop! Stop! Sorry, Pat. You can't go this way. The old bridge isn't safe. It's all this rain. These floods are dreadful. Oh dear, and we're running late as well. I know a shortcut. Just go straight on this way. Thanks, P.C. Selby. Sorry about the bother, Pat. Then left, past the signpost. Down here. Don't worry, you'll be all right. Don't worry, he says. Feels like a ploughed field. Watch the gate. Just enough room. I hope Ted knows what he's doing. I knew it. We're lost. You don't know which way from t'other, young Ted. That's not fair. I've been this way dozens of times. It looks a bit different today, that's all. Oh. <laughs> now where? We're lost. There was only one way to go. Oh, right over. I know where we are. This is the road to Thompson Ground. There were letters to deliver. 
and Alf was waiting to see the new post bus. Hello, Pat. Usual delivery, Alf. Thank you, Ted. Hello, Dot. Hello, Ted. Hello, Miss Hubbard. Granny Dryden was asleep. She woke up. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, are we there? Where's the market? Ted was looking at Alf's tractor. It just won't come off. It will. Well, she told me. Lord save us. Look out. Ah, oh heavens. Ouch. Was that the Reverend? Let's go and see. You all right, Reverend? What a ride. Thank the Lord, Alf, that you have hay in your barn. Oh, but I remember now. That's what the knots were for. One, to remember my sister's birthday. Two, to remember to post her present. And three, said Pat, to get new brakes for my bicycle. Why don't you go to town in the post bus? And I'll mend your bike for you. I'll bring it round to the vicarage tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Alf. Time we were on our way, said Pat. All aboard. I think I'll sit in front with Jess. I'm sure he won't mind. Next stop, Ingledale. Ingledale at last. Everybody back here, please, at two o'clock. We'll not be late, said Miss Hubbard. But when two o'clock came, Granny Dryden was missing. We can't go without her, said Pat. I'll go and look for her, said Miss Hubbard. She'll be in the market getting potatoes. I wonder where she's got to. She'll be having a good gossip somewhere. Oh, there you are. Have you seen Miss Hubbard? She's looking for you. Looking for me? Said Granny Dryden. I wasn't lost. I'll tell you what. You sit in the bus, and I'll go and look for Miss Hubbard. No sooner had Ted gone than Miss Hubbard came back. Oh, I can't find Granny Dryden anywhere, she said. I think we'll have to report her missing. Oh, there she is in the bus. How did she get there? Well, you see... And where's Ted gone? Looking for you. Oh, but I'm not lost. I know you're not lost, but... Oh, never mind. We'll just have to wait. And I don't know when we're going to get back to Greendale. I think I'll sit in the bus and read my paper. But Ted soon came back, and they set off home again. There were letters and a parcel to take to George Lancaster at Intake Farm. George was collecting the eggs. Hey, there's Pat! Hello, George. Hello, Pat. I like your new post bus. It's a great idea. Do you think I could take a dozen ends to the market in it tomorrow? Indeed not, said Miss Hubbard. Just think of the feathers. We'd all be sneezing for a week. 
Oh, but what lovely eggs. May I buy half a dozen, please? I forgot to get some at the market. There you are, six lovely fresh eggs, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, George. Mind you, don't break them. It was soon time to be on their way. Bye, Pat. There's Dorothy waving from her gate. What can be the matter? Oh, Pat, she said. Mrs. Goggins has been on the phone. She's ever so worried. She's wondering where you've all got to. Thinks you've had an accident with a new post bus. Why not come in and give her a ring? Dorothy. You're welcome. You must be parched after your trip. Most kind. Oh, Mrs. Goggins does worry so. Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Yes. No, we haven't been to Blackpool, just Ingledale. All safe and sound. We'll be back soon. Goodbye. What a time we've had. It's a wonder Pat managed to get us all home again. Now, don't you worry about your old bike, Reverend. I've given it a good oiling. It's as good as new. It just needs some new brake pads. I'll pop round with it tomorrow. More tea, Granny Dryden? Well, just one more cup. There was a saucer of milk for Jess. Come on, everybody. Time to be off. Hang on, Pat. I'll help you turn in the yard. Back you come. Uh, come on. Careful. Stop. Right. Off you go. It had been a long day. The next stop was at Miss Hubbard's cottage. Here we are, Miss Hubbard. Your stop. Just a minute, Pat. Mustn't forget anything. Careful as you get out. Mind the step. Thank you, Pat. Goodbye. Then it was Granny Dryden's turn. Here, let me give you a hand down, Granny Dryden. Uh, thanks, Pat. Me hat! I've lost me hat! Here it is. Looks as though she's been sitting on it. Thanks, Ted. I'll see you to your door, Granny Dryden. Dead. Bye, Pat. The last stop before home was at the church. Thank you. My goodness, it's been quite a day. Oh, Pat, I still have a knot in my handkerchief. Now then, Reverend, said Pat, is it a new one or just one that you forgot to undo? I've forgotten, said the Reverend. Oh, dear. Goodbye, Pat. Time we remembered to go home, Jess. <laughs> A 
Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 Post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. They were having a busy summer in Greendale. Alf Thompson was getting the hay in. He could just about manage to squeeze between the houses with his load. But then he wasn't counting on something of a traffic jam in the middle of the village. Pat had left his van outside the post office and someone had left a lorry on the other side of the road. It's a job getting through. Steady does it. How's it doing on the other side? Oh dear, oh dear. Oops. I'll have to back up. Right, here we go again. It looks as though Alf is stuck. I wonder who the lorry belongs to. Whew. A right mess I've got myself into. That sounds like Miss Hubbard. She'll soon sort things out. Stop! You'll have to stop, Miss Hubbard. Oh, what's this, Alf? How am I to get through if you block the road with your tractor? I'm stuck, Miss Hubbard. Between Pat's van and this lorry. Well, we can't wait here all day. Where is Pat? Pat? What's to do? said Mrs. Goggins. Don't take on now. Pat'll be back in a minute when he's done the village letters. It's this lorry, said Miss Hubbard. Who's left it here? There's no sign of a driver. What's going on? said Peter Paul. Has there been a crash? There will be if this lorry isn't moved, said Miss Hubbard. It looks like a builder's lorry. What's it doing in the village? Does that mean we'll have to wait around? I certainly hope not. Pat should be back soon. We need P.C. Selby. Here is P.C. Selby. Now then, now then. What's all this? What's going on? You can't block the road like this, you know. Alf Thompson's stuck. It's not my fault, it's this lorry. And Pat's van. They all talked at once. What a mix-up. Wait a minute, here. wait a minute. Now then. Here, this headlight's broken. Now then, let's get things sorted out. Who does this lorry belong to? 
Pat was hurrying round the village with his letters. Pat! Who's that calling? Oh, it's Sarah, Pat's wife. Must be your forgetting day, Pat. You went off without your sandwiches. Here we are. Special delivery. Just like a parcel, said Pat. I'd better not pop them in somebody's letterbox by mistake. <laughs> You'll be hungry if you do. Bye. Bye, and thanks. Left a bit. They no. still hadn't sorted now, the traffic over to your right. Stop. Left again. Now, a little to your right. Straight now. Straight. Stop. That's it. All over now. Left, he says, then right. Wish he'd make up his mind. Keep to your right. Back up a little. No, back again. Come straight on. You'll never get through there, you know. Oh, stop! Oh, over to the left. Mind the back. Oh, oh, dear. Stop. Back up a little. Then hard down on your left. Stop. You'll have to go back again. Now, hard over to your left. No. Oh, oh, what have we here? You can't leave the place five minutes and look at it. Back a little now. Now, hard over to you. Oops. Mind the van. No, no, right. Right, I've got me all of a muzzle. I'm staying put till somebody moves that lorry. Hang on, said Ted. I'll give you a hand. Ted's lorry? So sorry, everyone, said Major Forbes. Ted's just giving me a hand at the hall. Borrowed the lorry. First traffic jam in Greendale, what? Soon be off. Morning, everybody. Just a word, Pat. Urgent parcel coming from London. Bought these tin soldiers for my collection. Now take good care of it, there's a good chap, what? Don't you worry, Major, said Pat. I'll see you get it safe and sound, the way you always do. Good man. Bye for now. Bye. You see, you see, Selby, it's quite easy when you know how. At last Alf could get on his way. Miss Hubbard decided she had wasted enough time and moved off. Whilst Peter Fogg started up his motorbike again. Leaving PC Selby and Jess with the road to themselves. Pat was helping Mrs Goggins to sort the rest of the letters and parcels. There were two parcels with no address. Mrs Goggins found a label that had come unstuck. Oh, it's this modern glue, said Mrs Goggins. They're forever dropping off. Now, which one shall I put it on? I think it's off that one, said Pat. But that leaves one without an address, said Mrs Goggins. Don't worry, said Pat. As soon as somebody says, where's my parcel, I'll know it must be theirs. Simple. Oh, <laughs> I'd never have thought of that. Goodbye, Pat. Mind how you go. Bye. Now then, Jess, we'd better take the Major's parcel first. It's something special. Toy soldiers. Pat was on his way. Pat arrives at Garner Hall. Won't be long, Jess. Looks as though the Major's busy.
I could have sworn the bell was working. Whoops. Uh, anybody in? Hello? Major? Major Forbes? Uh, anyone at home? I'll leave the parcel here. It'll be quite safe. What's that? <laughs> Must be me imagining things. Where is everybody? They must be having a tea break. Pat was on his way. That's just the place for a quiet picnic, Jess. Under that tree. Under that tree will do nicely. Whew, that was a warm climb, but it was worth it. Now, let's see. Tuck in, Jess. There's nothing like a quiet picnic. This is a funny sandwich. Oh, no. It's the Major's toy soldiers. How did they get into my lunch? Oh, what a noodle I am. I've got the wrong parcel. I must have left my sandwiches on the hall table in the Major's house. It was this parcel that the address fell off. Come on, Jess. Back to the Major's. He'll be thinking his soldiers have run away. Down at Garner Hall, the Reverend Timms was trying to cheer the Major up, and P.C. Selby was looking for footprints. Anything the matter? asked Pat. What's going on? Robbery, said the Major. That's what's going on, Pat. My collection of soldiers, gone, all gone, what? Marched off without a sound. But there's a funny thing, the robbers left their sandwiches behind. Oh, no, said Pat. They were my sandwiches. You see, I muddled the parcels up, my sandwiches and your soldiers. I left my sandwiches on your hall table, and your parcel of soldiers was still in my bag. And here it is. Pat, you're a genius, said the Major. You've saved my new soldiers from the robbers, what? The best of the bunch, too. Good man. But I'm still hungry, said Pat. The Lord will provide, said the Reverend Timms. I'll just pop in for my sandwiches. Now then, Pat, said P.C. Selby, I'll have to ask you for a statement. You can't go in there, Pat. Not till we've looked for fingerprints. But I want my sandwiches, said Pat. Those sandwiches are evidence, said P.C. Selby. Evidence, Pat, that's what they are. Nobody can touch them, not till the CID get here from Pencaster. And goodness knows when that'll be. I wonder if Sarah's got something nice for lunch, said Pat. I'm so hungry, Jess. I think we'll have to pop home and see. Bye. Bye, old chap. Bye, Pat. Home sweet home. Hello, anyone at home? It's me. Oh, you've never lost your sandwiches after all, have you? said Sarah. 
Not lost, said Pat, but they're evidence now. Oh, well, I never. And Pat had to tell her the whole story of the robbery at Garner Hall. Jess was too busy to listen. I'll have to be on my way, said Pat. There are still lots of letters to be delivered. Mmm. Robbery or no robbery. Now you'll be passing the school just about the right time to pick young Julian up, said Sarah. Save me a trip. All right. I'll not forget. Bye for now. Come on, Jess. We haven't finished yet. In you get. Pat was on his way again. What's happened to Peter Fowl? Hello, Pat. Having trouble? I certainly am. My front wheel brakes have locked. Nearly threw me over the handlebars. I'll ask Ted Glenn to pop along with his toolkit. Here's something to read while you're waiting. Oh, good. It's my motorbike magazine. Great. Bye, Pat, and thanks. Pat called at Thompson Ground. Alf was helping Ted load some wood onto the lorry. Hello, Pat. Pat had some letters for Alf. Come and have a cuppa, said Alf. Dorothy's sure to have the kettle on. He was right. Just the job. Hello, Pat. What's all this about a robbery at the hall? said Alf. Pat had to tell the whole story again from the beginning. Oh, said Pat, I nearly forgot with all this talk about the robbery. Peter Fogg stuck with his motorbike. He's broken down, about two miles back. Do you think you could give him a hand, Ted? No trouble. I'll pick him up when we've got this wood loaded. Thanks for the tea, said Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat's next stop was at Intake Farm. He met P.C. Selby coming out. Any news of the robbery? asked Pat. Good news and bad news, said P.C. Selby. They caught the robbers on the road to Pencaster, but there's no sign of the collection of toy soldiers. Bye for now. Cheerio, Pat. There was a newspaper for George Lancaster. Pat set out to find him. But where had he got to? Looking for me, Pat. Ooh, you made me jump, George. I thought the robbers were after me. Here's your Hen Farmer's Weekly. Oh, thanks, Pat. Then George told Pat how he dreamt he was being chased by a giant hen, which flew away just before he woke up. It's time I was flying away, said Pat. I'm supposed to be collecting young Julian from school. Now, where has that cat got to? He might be after rabbits down the field, said George. He likes my rabbits, does your Jess? They went to look. Jess! 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 He sometimes comes round here. No sign of him, though. Jess! Jess! 
Pat found Jess with his rear end sticking out of a rabbit hole. Here he is, George. I think he's got himself stuck. Pat took hold of his cat as gently as possible and pulled. Something small and heavy rolled into the grass. George picked it up and looked at it. What's Jess found? said Pat. Looks like one of these old tin soldiers, said George. I used to have a box full when I was a lad. Could do with a bit of a clean. Did you say a tin soldier? said Pat. Yes, why? The robbery. You must have heard. Hang on. Pat thrust his arm down the rabbit hole as far as it would go and brought out a shopping bag. He looked inside and found it full of toy soldiers. Jess has found the loot, said Pat. The robbers must have hidden them on their way to Pencaster. They must have passed your gate. Clever cut, said George. I must get these back to the Major, said Pat. He will be pleased. Keep an eye on these, Jess. Bye, Pat. Bye. Never mind, Jess. The Major will be so pleased to have his soldiers back. I'm sure he'll give you something nice. Pat remembered to pick Julian up from school. Am I late? Huh, not much, Dad. On the way, he told Julian all about the robbery and how Jess had found the soldiers down a rabbit hole. Gone a hall at last. Ted and the Major were still busy with the roof. What's a fellow doing here again, eh, what? Special delivery, Major. What, in a scruffy plastic bag? Bless my eyes, it's my soldiers. My precious soldiers. Thank you, Pat, you're a stout fellow. And Pat told the whole story yet again. But it was Jess that found them, said Julian. Wasn't it? It's a good place to hide something, said Ted. Down a rabbit hole. Now who'd think of looking there? We'd better be off home, said Pat. Sarah will think we've got lost. Take this with you, said Ted. And make sure you look at page two. Uh, thanks, Ted. I will. I don't know why Ted wants me to read the paper, said Pat. Bye. Bye, Pat, and thanks again. Julian couldn't wait to see what it was. Oh, it's about a reward. For anyone who finds the major soldiers, 500 pounds. Well, I never, said Pat. That'd buy a lot of fish for Jess. It's time to go home and tell Sarah all our news. Let me tell her first. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 boom. Be-dum, dum, dilly, dum, boom, boom. Rum, boom, boom. Oh, 
Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock. Bring Morning. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Morning, Alf. Hello, Pat. Granny Dryden's getting her pension at the post office. And uh, ten first-class stamps, please, Mrs Goggins. Oh, look. I do love the village fete. Do you know I've never missed one since I was a girl. Mind, it's not like the old times. Oh, no. Brass bands and drums, trumpets. Oh, but I hope there'll be some sort of music. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. My old dad, you know, he played the... Bless me, what did he play? I know he made a lovely sound, something big and boomy-like. I wonder whatever became of it. Here you are, Granny Dryden. Well, never mind. Now, Mrs Goggins, would you kindly ask Pat to be sure to pop in this afternoon? I will, I will. That attic of mine. You know, there's all sorts of things up there. I've been wanting to get it cleared out ever since that old chimney pot blew off. Hello, Granny Dryden. Morning, Peter. Hello, Pat. Hello, Peter. Look at this. I thought you'd given up that old guitar. Nay, I'm off to Pencaster to learn how to play it properly like. You never know, I might get on the telly with it. <laughs> it would be nice to play something. Something big and boomy. You're sounding cheerful today, said Mrs Goggins. It's the music in the air, said Pat. Music, said Miss Hubbard. That's what we need for a good fate. Now then, Reverend, do you think that old record player of yours could keep going long enough to churn out a few jolly old tunes? Oh, I think Ted'll be able to mend it. He's kept it going all these years. Oh, Pat, I nearly forgot. Granny Dryden asked if you'd pop in. Righto. Bye, Pat. I expect she's got something for the fate. Bye, all. Bye, Pat. It's time for Pat to be on his way. Morning, Granny Dryden. You've got two letters today. Oh, Pat, I'm glad you've come. There's some things in the attic and they'll be just right for the fate. You know, some old hats and dressmakers' dummies and things. Could you climb up and have a look? Me old legs, you know, they're too wobbly for that ladder. They'll be there somewhere. Now, mind how you go. Let's have a look. 
Up we go. Do be careful, Pat. Hmm. It's a bit dark up here. I won't be able to see a thing. Hmm. Where do I start? What's in here? Ah, a torch. And it works. Right now, down to business. Oh dear, what a jumble. Just like my granddad's hat. Must have been here since I was a lad. Hmm, stylish. <laughs> I like that. What's over here? A chair. A coffee pot and kettle. Boxes and tubs. I say, this looks promising. Oh, it's uh, some sort of a umpa thing, I think. It's too dusty to blow. Now then, better get this locked down. Look out below. Whoops. <laughs> Patchy gave me such a fright. I thought it was my old dad for a minute. You know, off to play in the Greendale Brass Band. Do you know you're the very image of him? Now I remember, Pat, it was the tuba, that's what he played. I tell you what, you know you're welcome to it. Why don't you learn to play it? You know, we could have a new band in Greendale. Real live music for the fate. Well, uh, I might do that. <laughs> Seems the right sort of size for me, big and boomy. Better than that little old bugle I had when I was a lad in the scouts. Thanks, Granny Dryden. Very kind of you. Pom 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 pido, pom pom tiddly dum pido, pom 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 pido. Hmm, a number eight spinner, I should think. Oh, he's back. Hmm, this filter needs cleaning. What do you reckon to this, Ted? Oh, stop! Well, Ted. I reckon it wants a spot of something before it gives me headache, but... Let's try a drop of oil. <laughs> it's good stuff, this. It's a bit overpowered, Pat. Here, try some of these rags down its throttle. Thanks, Ted. I'd best be on my way now. Bye, Pat. Oh, dear. She won't start, Ted. Nee, it's no good, Pat. I can't mend it just now. It needs a new plug. Oh dear, Jess. How on earth are we going to deliver all our letters? I'll tell you what, Pat. You could take the post bus out. I can give you a lift into the village to pick it up. I think you'd better sit in back with that thing. I can't risk getting a blast from it when I'm driving. Young Jess can keep me company. Are you with us, Pat? Ready. And off they went. But Pat just couldn't resist having another toot on the tuba. Oh! Ouch! What was that? Poor PC Selby. He ended up in a heap on the road. 
Pat was so busy puffing and blowing that he didn't see him. They passed Alf Thompson on his tractor. Ouch! What was that? Sounds like a tire blowing. What a noise. Help! Road hog! Here we are, and a good thing too, Pat. You and your blooming tuber. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to make a noise like that. Terrible rumpus. Pat was on his way again. At Thompson Ground, Jess thought he would stay somewhere quiet. But there was no one about. So Pat thought he'd have just one more try to get music from his tuba. <laughs> What was that terrible noise? Sorry, Dorothy. It was only me trying to make music. Music, Pat? It sounded more like a bomb going off. I never heard the likes of it. Dear me, there must be somewhere I can practice without frightening everyone. enough here. Nobody about. Mm, nice and shady. <sighs> Just imagine if I could really, really could play the tuba. We could have a great time making music like the old days with the village band. I would practice every day so I could join and play and I'd try to make a very lovely sound. I'm so lucky that I found this lovely tune. Now I've got a chance to try my hand With my practice every day I'd soon be proud to say That I can make a really lovely, really proper sound Putting up the music, we must get to know the score Think what we can play Oh, our music will be sure to have a beat the tuba, it would make a sound Sure to give a richer sound No mistake would make the sound complete It's lucky that I found this lovely tuba Now I've got a chance to try my hand With my practice every day I'd soon be proud to say That I can make a really lovely, really proper sound I'll try to make a really lovely, really proper song. Phew, I must have dropped off. Now then, let's have one more go at this tuba. Miss Hubbard was busy in her garden. Oh! Oh dear! My prized blooms! What was that? Morning, Miss Hubbard. 
A parcel for you. Did you hear that dreadful noise, Pat? What do you think it was? Um, well, <laughs> I couldn't rightly say, Miss Hubbard. Uh, I'll have to dash. Lots of tube, I mean, letters today. Bye. Well, I never in all my days... Later that evening, P.C. Selby was out and about making inquiries. He called at the church. Evening, Reverend. I wonder if you can help me with my inquiries. It's about these strange noises. There have been reports from all over Greendale. Some folks think it might be intruders from outer space. Even I, an officer of the law, was thrown from my bike by a loud noise and a vibration in the air. Um, yes, officer. This requires some thought. You know what the Bible says, I suppose? Make a loud noise and rejoice. Dear heavens, what's that? That's it, Reverend. Dreadful, I'd call it. I'll go and investigate. Stay here, Reverend, and if I'm not back in five minutes, allow me to join you, officer. Now, Reverend, this is a job for the constabulary. Oh, but I insist. Two heads are better than one. And besides, I know my way around the churchyard in the dark. Now, Reverend, we must go quietly or we'll never catch it. Lord, defend us. Careful, Reverend. We're close. Maybe I should fetch help. No time for that. Aha! I can see the culprit. A mysterious shape in the gloom. Look, over there. Good heavens, it's Pat. Pat? Hello, Reverend. Hello, PC Selby. What's all this about, Pat? Well, it's, it's, it's me tuba. Most commendable. He wants to make music. Oh, yeah, but you didn't fall off your bike, did you? I'll have a word with Major Forbes. He can teach you, Pat. He played something like it in the army. It's time to get ready for the fate. Ted Glenn's fixing the bunting. Pat's giving him a hand. Everybody helped. P.C. Selby came to keep an eye on things. He soon had his hands full. Whatever are these dummies for, Pat? They're for the knock the hat off stall. As well as helping with the preparations for the fate, Pat had his rounds to do. There were some letters for Thompson Brown. Dorothy was making jam to sell at the fete. Morning, Mrs. Thompson. Uh, I'll put these letters here. Bye. Bye, Pat. And in between, he had his tuba lessons at Major Forbes. Ready now? A one, two, three. Good man. At last it's time for the fate. Pat's collecting the children from the school. Not forgetting the teacher, Mr Pringle. It'll be a real squash. Roll up. Three balls for five B. Try your luck. Knock all the hats off and win a prize. Come on, Charlie Pringle, have a go. Right, you are. Off! Off! I won! I won! First prize and all. Oh. Uh, thanks. Did you 
Yeah, that's my thing. I think the old record player's given up the ghost, Reverend. Let's just check these leads. Hmm, looks all right. This one seems okay, Ted. It's your old valves, Reverend. They've gone pop. And you can't get this type now. Then that's the end of the music. Oh, but we've always had music at the fete. Ever since I was a young lass and won the club dance competition. Well, this won't play again, that's for sure. I don't know what else we can do. Hold on. I've got an idea. Uh, Miss Hubbard, uh, could I have a word? I wonder where they're off to. Heading for Miss Hubbard's? Yes, that's where Pat stopped. And here's Peter Fogg on his motorbike. Peter's giving them a hand. What's this for? It's for the fate, said Pat. Mind how you go, Pat. How about bringing your guitar and joining in? Ye champion, said Peter. The piano jangled a bit on the way back. What's happening? Look, a piano. Gently now. Oh, oops. Oh, do be careful. It's a good job it's on wheels. Stop. That'll do. Here's Peter with his guitar. All right, Major. Good man. Here's an A. Could I just borrow one of these? Thank you so much. All ready now? Ready when you are, Major. By the right. Quick. March. Um, I mean, um, all together now. Oh, one, two, three. of the days when I was a lass. <laughs> Isn't it just too bad? Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, 
Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white. Coat. Early one morning, Jess arrived just in time to be let in with the milk. Hello, Jess. Just in time for breakfast. Julian was waiting for the milk, and Pat wanted a little drop in his tea. But Sarah didn't forget Jess. Time to be getting a move on, said Pat. I wonder what sort of day it's going to be. Let's see what the old barometer says. Oh dear, just look at that. It's pointing to snow. Now then, let's have a look at the sky. <laughs> Not a cloud. Pat tapped the barometer just to make sure. That's what I thought it said. Snow. Great. Snow? You mark my words, said Pat. We'll have snow today. I've never known my barometer to get it wrong. Snow, said Sarah again. Never in this world. There's not a cloud in the sky. Snow, said Julian. I don't mind. We're going on a nature walk this afternoon. It'll be more fun with a bit of snow. I'd better take some extra sandwiches, just in case. We'd better tell Mr Pringle. It might not happen, said Sarah. Now off you go, or you'll be late. It was cold outside, even though the sun was shining. Pat hurried along to the post office. Ted Glenn had his scarf on, a sure sign that winter was on the way. Morning, Pat. Morning, Ted. Morning, Mrs Goggins. Brr, by gum, it's cold today. Morning, Pat. The post is none too hot either. I reckon it's going to get colder. My barometer was pointing to snow this morning. Snow? Oh, dearie me, not already. Surely not snow. Such a nice sunny day. Now, what was George saying when he popped in with the eggs? He had the radio on in his van. I'm sure they said it was going to be cold but dry today. Not a word about snow. <laughs> These folks on the radio, what do they know about the weather in Greendale? Now then, my old barometer, I've never known it to be wrong. Jess had found something to play with. Pat and Mrs Goggins were too busy to notice what had happened to the string. Now, that's for the village. I'll just tie it. Oh, now where's that string? It was here a minute ago. Um, is this it? Well, I think it is, but what's happened to my nice, neat ball of string? That cat can sense when snow's on the way. Come on, Jess. It looks as if a whirlwind's been at it. Never mind snow. Him and his cat. Pat was on his way. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Have you got your snowshoes ready? Snowshoes? Whatever are you talking about, Pat? We'll not be seeing snow this side of Christmas. Oh, don't be so sure. My old barometer... Oh, poo to your barometer. I go by the TV. Well, mind how you go. There was a parcel for Dr Gilbertson. Ready for the snow, Doctor, said Pat. Plenty of plasters and cough mixture, eh? Snow, said Dr Gilbertson. What's all this about snow, Pat? It's a lovely sunny day and I always have a good stock of medicine to hand. You never know when you need it. My old barometer says it's going to snow today. Oh, Pat, I'd rather go by the Met Office. More scientific. They have computers, you know. Anyway, look at the sky, you and your barometer. I don't suppose it's the snow that chewed the corner of this parcel. Oh, well, um, it's when the weather's on the turn. Cats, you know, very sensitive. 
It's not too badly chewed, is it? Urgent letters. Got to be off. Cheerio, Doctor. Morning, Bat. Lovely day. Morning, Alf. Have you got your stores in? Stores, Bat? What stores? Winter stores. In case you get cut off in the snow. But there isn't any snow, Pat. Not a flake. The man in the paper said it was set fine for two weeks. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> That's not what my barometer says this morning. <laughs> now, where has that cat got to? I saw something streak across the yard. It's not like your Jess to do that. Jess! Jess! What are you doing up there, Jess? Hello, Pat. Hello, Dorothy. Now, hasn't your Jess been stuck up enough trees in his time? When will he learn? He knows things we don't know. Come on, Jess. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it. Pat was on his way again. <coughs> Next stop was Granny Dryden's. Morning! Morning, Pat. Lovely day for the time of year. Unseasonal, I'd say. Mind you, it was never like this when I was a girl. Come November, the snow would be coming down like feathers. We were cut off for weeks. We couldn't get to school, you know. You mark my words. We'll have snow today. Well, mind how you go. Bye. Bye, Pat. I don't know, Jess. Nobody seems to believe in my old barometer anymore. I'm not sure I do. But they can't say I didn't warn them. Hey, nothing like a spot of woodwork. Hmm. Better take this end off. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Ted, you've not let your stove go out, have you? I was just looking forward to a good warm-up. <laughs> I'm too busy to bother with it, said Ted. Besides, it's like a spring day today. You get warm doing a bit of sawing and that. I'd get it going now if I were you. There's a real cold snap on the way. If you'd seen my barometer this morning, I've never known it to be wrong. Nay, Pat, that's old-fashioned stuff. It's best if you leave that sort of thing to the experts. I listen to the radio. Hmm. I don't know about all these new-fangled knick-knacks. Give me my grand's barometer any time. Pat. Hello, Sam. <coughs> Pat arrived at the village school, just as Mr Pringle was setting out with the children. Morning, Mr Pringle. I hope you're not going far. There's snow on the way, you know. Well, don't worry, Pat. We'll be as safe as the letters in your bag. You know what the scouts say. Be prepared. Besides, here's the Pencaster Gazette local weather report. Set fair to the weekend. 
Well, you couldn't ask better than that. That's not what my barometer says. It says snow. We have promised we'll be really careful. We'll just go up the teeniest hill, no further than Birkhow Barn at the most. Well, mine, how you go. Uh, it makes you wonder, Jess. There again, I could be wrong. Morning, Pat. Morning, Reverend. Doing a spot of sweeping up the leaves. Well, no, Pat. It's this sand. Makes such a mess, gets everywhere. There was I thinking there was snow on the way. Then, bless us all, the wind turned, and out came the sun. The good Lord smiles upon us at mysterious times. I do hope you're right, Reverend. I'd best be on my way. Cheerio. Hmm, it certainly is a mystery. Mm, you never know. Mind, that wind's getting up. And here come the clouds. Hello, Pat. Afternoon, Mrs. Pottage. There's a parcel for you today. Thanks, Pat. I'd best not open it. I promised to meet the twins on their way back from... Oh, Pat, look! Snow at last, my dear old barometer was right after all. We'd both best be on our way before it gets really bad. And there's the ancient oak and the willow. And when the cold weather comes, the little creatures will begin the long winter sleep. I wouldn't mind staying in bed for the winter, said Tom. Mr. Pringle. And over in the meadow, the swift hare. Remember to put that in your nature diaries. Mr. Pringle, look. And here we see the last of the dog roses. Oh, please, Mr. Pringle. It started to... Over there, that's bracket fungus. Don't touch it. It's deadly poisonous. I'm cold. And there, the rooks. Flying from tree to tree. Swooping and... Oops! Ow! My foot. Ouch, it hurts. Oh... Oh, Mr. Pringle, are you all right? It's, um, it's getting a bit snowy and cold. Can we go home, please? Oh, ouch. Well, yes, that would be a good idea. A very good idea. But I don't think I can walk, children. Dad's barometer was right after all. Oh, I wish he was here with his van to take us home. George! George! Where are you? He can't have gone far in this weather. Is that you, George? I've got a letter for you. Thanks, Pat. Put it in the basket, will you? Now then, look at this. Those little marks in the snow. Tracks. Well, it's not Jess. He hates the snow. I reckon it's a fox after my prize ends. Best lock them up safely, said Pat. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. by the minute, and the road was slippery. Ooh, oh dear. Coming downhill, Pat slid backwards into a field. 
Oh dear. Luckily, the gate was open. At last, Pat reached the village. He stopped outside the school to collect young Julian. Hello. Where is everybody? Oh, Pat, said Sarah. The children aren't back yet. They must be lost in the snow with Mr. Pringle. You were right about the snow, Pat. Your old barometer beats my radio. I wish it had been wrong and the children were back safely. Now then, said Mrs. Pottage, they'll be all right with Mr. Pringle. Yon snow's getting awful deep. They should be back by now. It's getting dark, said Ted. Well, the snow stopped at least. Something must have happened to them. Now, I remember Mr. Pringle said they were going as far as Birkhow Bone. They might have taken shelter there, said Ted. I wonder if I could get through with my van. You'll only get stuck. I'll tell you what. Why don't we have a go with my lorry? It's bigger and heavier. We'd have a chance. There's a barn over there, Mr. Pringle. We could go in and shelter. We'd be warmer out of the wind. Well, that's an excellent idea, young Julian. We're getting slower and slower in this snow. Come on, children. <laughs> Ah, oh, great! Bill's found a light. Now, children, let's settle down. I don't like sitting in the dark. There's plenty of straw. Nice and cozy. What do we do now? Ah, that's better. Nothing much. Ouch! My foot. I don't like the dark. Now for the emergency supplies. Hot cocoa and biscuits. Any idea where we are, Ted? Well, I've seen that tree somewhere before. But everything looks different in all this snow. Then, they get stuck in a snowdrift. Oh, that's done it. Come on, Pat. We'll have to dig ourselves out. You dig your side, Pat. I'll dig mine. Mm. Oh. Bike. Mm. Won't take long. Mm. Oh. Hot work, this. Ah. E. That should do it. Let's give her a try. Thank you. 
then we'll find that we'll win through. Oh no, that sounds bad, said Pat. It's now but a bit of wet got onto the plugs, I bet, said Ted. It'll be all right when I get it dried out. I'm sure I know this lane, said Pat. I'll just have a look. <laughs> Not that I'm going to see much in the dark. Hmm, better be getting back. What's that? It sounds like... Oh! Oh! It sounds like singing. Ted. Ted, there's somebody over there singing. I heard them. Clear as clear. What do you want about Pat singing? How can there be? Listen. You're right. Let's get a move on, said Ted. So, here you are. We, it's Pat and Ted. Hooray! 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 Come on, you lot. That's enough singing. We'd better get you home. Take it easy, Mr. Pringle. Take it easy. Like a hand, Mr. Pringle. Easy as you go now. Watch that foot. Thank you, Ted. Last one. Up you go. Okay, Ted. Praised. Here they come. I hope they're all right. Katie and Tom, I'm so glad you're safe. What about the others now? What a story young Julian had to tell Sarah. It was great fun. Really, it was. It's a bad sprain. You will soon be fine with a bit of rest. Well done, Pat and Ted. That was magnificent. But I know one thing. Next time I want to know what the weather's going to do, I'll ask Pat what his barometer has to say before I do anything else. Here, here. Me too. Champion, said Ted. Proper champion. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock 